<laughs> Stephen, because Stephen, you, you tweet about, is it Harry, your son, that you tweet? Uh, Harry, I've got two, but Harry's the eldest, yeah. Because uh, what was the thing at the market that... <laughs> Took him to Camden Market. He shouts, Jews! <laughs> Jews! <laughs> Mummy. He says, there are Jews everywhere! <laughs> Danny, you've got to get a Jew for Mummy! <laughs> I was like, what? He said, Jews. And he pointed to it was a jewellery store with jewels. Oh. <laughs> For a moment there. You, for a moment there, you thought, thought your wife was sleeping with Mel Gibson. I thought, <laughs> but I haven't got my Jew next. <laughs> wow. Uh, now, you're not the only one working in the media of a film. Chris Rock has a new film out. <laughs> yes, it does. Yeah. Yes, it does. Yeah. yeah. I got more. I'm really excited to see that, by the way. It's really it's good. I, I, I love Two Days in Paris so much. And this is better. Really? It's better. God, it must be good then. I'm <laughs> loving this. You're doing my job. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> Ask him about it. <laughs> I invite no one. <laughs> It's, a, it's an unlikely movie for Chris Rock. Is that a, I, I, I don't know why it would be unlikely that Chris Rock is in this movie, but it is. It's, it's a, 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 essentially, it's a French it's film. It's essentially a French movie, yeah. Yeah, and it's you and Julie Delpy. She wrote it, directed it. Yes. And yes. you star in it together. Yes. And as you were saying, it's, it's not quite a sequel. It's a follow-on. Yes. Yeah. It's like the Twilight movies, it's not sequels. <laughs> following the story. Yeah. Uh, two days in New York. So, uh, roughly, what is it? What is it? Uh, me and uh, Julie Delpy are a couple. We have uh, a couple of kids. And uh, her parents are, you know, her, my in laws are coming in for the week. And hilarity ensues because, you know, they're French. And we think the French are so sophisticated, but these French, they're kind of ghetto French. <laughs> <laughs> It gets kind of funny. <laughs> and it is really funny, because I didn't know what to... I really didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what it would be, but it's just... It's really funny. It's good. Yeah. It's good. It's like, like, this movie doesn't suck. <laughs> well, no, no, it, 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 I didn't know what to expect, and I really enjoyed it. Um, and Judy Delpy, she's easy on the eye. She's oh, very she's great, and she lets me, like, touch her and feel her ass and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you need that when you're doing a movie with somebody, to feel like a couple, you know? <laughs> Did she write the part for you? She said she wrote the part for me. I think it was originally written for a Queen Latifah. But, uh, <laughs> after Queen Latifah passed, I was next on the list. Because <laughs> you get offered many kind of... Because you're a romantic lead in this movie. Really. Yeah, I don't get offered a lot of romantic leads. No. I get, no? you know, quick-talking mailroom guy, <laughs> cop with, you know... Zebras. Yeah, zebras. <laughs> a lot of zebras. Yeah. Wasn't there a thing where, like, Miramax called you in? Because, like, Miramax is posh. Yeah, I remember the first time Harvey Weinstein called me up, and I'm thinking, oh, it's Harvey Weinstein, the greatest guy who makes some of the best movies in the world. You know, and, you know, the, the English patient and the piano and whatever. And I get in there, and it's like, hey, we got this movie called Rapper Bus. <laughs> On a, driving a bus with a bunch of rappers. It's like, what is that English patient file? And, and the movie, the movie uh, Two Days in New York, it's opening here on the 18th of May, next Friday. Next Friday, next, yes. Next Friday, next Friday. And uh, we've got a clip, and it's you and the family. I think it's pretty self explanatory. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's good. No, you must be really pleased with it. It's good. Yeah, it's good. It's good. good movie. It's good. And, and in the movie, there are scenes where you talk to your good friend, Barack Obama. Yes, yes, yes. I talk to a, a life-size uh, cardboard cutout of Barack Obama and try to get advice from him. Because and, you know Barack Obama, I kind of do know Barack Obama. Because it's interesting, because he just came out in favor of the gay marriage I know. Thing. Make, I was like, maybe I'll marry a guy just to see how it is. <laughs> now we can. Now yeah. we can. <laughs> I'll get a couple of wives. <laughs> because that's so controversial, do you think he did that because he thinks, I'm not getting re-elected, or did he do it because he's so confident he's going to be? I don't know. I just think, you know, when you have kids, you can't lie to your kids. And he, you know, he said, I, I read today, you know, his kids have uh, friends that have, you know, same-sex parents. I, I Actually, I just took my daughter to a party the other day, and, you know, two guys, you know, same-sex parents. And he couldn't sit there as the most powerful man in the world and say that these people deserve to be discriminated against. 
to his little girls. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think, you know, I thank the children more than anything. Yeah. The children will make you, will, you know, make you find who you truly are and make you honest. And I think that's what happened. These yeah. kids made them honest. Yeah, good. Yeah. 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 You know, because the time, it was, it's a controversial thing to say and the time is interesting. It's yeah. controversial. It just shows you how screwed up the world is, though. That a man just goes, hey, I think gay people should be treated like everyone else. Controversy! <laughs> What the world is this? It's so horrible. Uh, now, in terms of your daughters and meeting people, they're still waiting for your invitation to the White House, aren't yes, they? Yes, we have not gotten that. In. You know, I was there not too long ago. <laughs> but uh, it, my daughters want me to arrange a play date with Sasha and Malia. And <laughs> Sasha and Malia are a little older than my daughters. They're like, hey, you know. <laughs> Sasha and Malia, you know, they're hanging with the Kardashians or something. <laughs> <laughs> probably not, probably not. Yeah. But I like, I like the way your, your girls are aiming high. You know, yeah. my girls aim real high. <laughs> How can we use this Chris Rock connection? They don't. Yeah. Yeah, we go to Disneyland, they want, a, they want Mickey to eat with us. <laughs> Call Mickey up, Dad. <laughs> See what he's doing for dinner. <laughs> and, and are, are, now, cause are the girls good at school? Because you weren't... Very good at school, were you? Oh, they're just horrible. No, oh, they're no. great. They're great. They're, I mean, they're smarter than me because I can't help them with their homework anymore. At 10? At 10. <laughs> I dropped out like real. At 9. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know my story at the coal mine. Because, <laughs> Christine, did you go to school? Yeah, of course. <laughs> what? Because you don't seem like you went to school. No, no. Yes. <laughs> Set when you Jody were, Foster when you were... was her teacher. <laughs> <laughs> um, I started to do homeschool when I went to high school, but um, but I went to public. I was miserable all through middle school and stuff, which is normal. I got to do the normal. Yeah, yeah. Experience. You were unhappy yeah. like everyone should be. Excellent. Well done. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So miserably unhappy. No, no, no. I just uh, I really liked independent study. I was able to like choose everything. I read on the road and freshman year because of it and that's you know not something I probably would have been able to do in public school so and now you're in the movie yeah yes yes yeah very yeah, good I'm very excited yeah. about it. Are you, have you started filming that yet yeah we're finished we're about to go to Cannes actually oh right mm. I'm, I'm going to Cannes really yeah that'll be fun I'll see you next week cool man Stephen are you going to Cannes <laughs> no you're not no. going to Cannes <laughs> no. I'm going to Canning Town <laughs> But, now, but in terms of school, though, you went to a very posh school, I didn't did, you? yeah, boarding school, yeah, yeah. And you were quite a pretty child. Well, for about a year, maybe. That was my first big break. My first lead role was in Beauty and the Beast. Oh, <gasps> she's Playing just... Beauty. <laughs> there were no girls in school. I had an auburn wig, a green dress, flawless skin, what can I say? <laughs> looked hot for a nine-year-old boy dressed as a girl. There's no way out of that one, is there? <laughs> no. No, I didn't look hot. <laughs> Well, one thing that happens to naughty boys in school is uh, they get detention. You didn't know where I was going with that, did you? No, I was, I was scared for a minute. Uh, <laughs> Graham's gone very dark in this episode of the show. No, they get detention, and there's a website that uh, collects together the detention slips that kids receive. You know, the bit they've got to bring home and show their parents. So there's lots of reasons. Now, there's some classics of the genre in here. Uh, this one, so Joe's behaviour in class was inappropriate and unacceptable. He started with excessive chair squeaking and ended with farting in a student's face. <laughs> That's quite an escalation. <laughs> excessive chair squeaking. Then, I, li I, just, I, I almost want to meet the child who did this next one. <laughs> this next child, yeah. He was disrupting class claiming to be the reborn Jesus and hitting another student <laughs> with a Bible. <laughs> Prove it isn't true. How do you exactly? Yeah. How do you know he wasn't the risen Jesus? Yeah. Jesus yeah. has got detention now. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is a teacher who sent this through. This, and remember, this is real. A teacher really typed this letter and gave it to a child to take home to their parents. Right? Alex consistently defied me. During class, he contradicted me numerous times when I insisted that the length of one kilometre was greater than that of one mile. Right? <laughs> but down. Although he was correct. <laughs> And show a blatant disregard for authority. <laughs> a complete lack of respect for his school. In the future, Alex would be better off simply accepting my teachings without resistance. 
Let me see if your son understands this. Isn't that genius? Regards, <laughs> yeah. Rommel. <laughs> yeah. Then back, back to more uh, typical children. Drew large penis on whiteboard. <laughs> That's amazing. Well done, little naughty children. Very good. Stephen Mangan, I'm about to explain. I, now, you, now, now, you're going to be in awe, in awe, when I tell you, Stephen Mangan. The first episode of the new series of episodes just finished on BBC Two. Uh, a hungry public have flipped over to BBC One to see you again. Friday nights are sorted. Oh, absolutely. Because I hope you know. I'm sure I've told you. I love episodes. Oh, I really like the first series. And uh, now, obviously, here it's just a comedy. In America, presumably, it's Matt LeBlanc's new sitcom. Yeah, he's fairly famous. Yes. <laughs> we had him on recently, and, you know, so we know he's the most charming, self-effacing guy. In public. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he's lovely, he's lovely. Boringly, he's a really nice guy. But yeah. to begin with, you weren't too sure of him, were you? Well, you know, they're very famous, very rich guy, and you don't know what they're going to be like, you know, because fame is hard to handle, I think, if you're that, you know, famous. Yeah. And he, uh... The first time I met him, we read for the part, we read together. He came up to me and said, I'm going to give you some advice. I thought, great, he knows what he's talking about. He said, don't suck. <laughs> I walked off. <laughs> I got Jesus, OK. So I didn't, obviously. No, you got the part. Got the part. Uh, now, we've got a clip of next week's episode. Uh, Matt, uh, obviously, at the beginning of this, uh, Matt has slept with your wife, and he's now trying to make amends. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen this, though? I haven't seen it. Is it on show? It's on Showtime. Showtime, Showtime, Showtime over States. there, yeah. 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 And BBC Two on Fridays here. I'm loving it. Now, the other exciting thing, be prepared to be uh, amazed. <laughs> Stephen Mangan is in a new movie. Yes. <laughs> Stephen Mangan is playing a postman, Pat. Ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Yeah. Are you familiar with Postman Pat? Oh, no. <laughs> no, explain Postman Pat to nice people who don't He's know Postman Pat. He's a middle-aged male man <laughs> with glasses and a ginger mullet. <laughs> as far as the best way to describe him. He's a cartoon character. Okay. So they are making uh, a movie of Pat, and he has a cat called Jess. Yeah, He's a black, black and, and white, white cat. cat. Black, yeah, black, yeah. He's probably the least sexy character ever written. <laughs> I played Adrian Mole and Postman Pat. My wife is, who have I married? <laughs> Not James Bond, Postman Pat. But there I, you go. We've got, a, we've got a picture of you. This is Postman Pat. There he is. Hey. Oh. <laughs> Sexy. Now, have you started doing the, the animation yet? Yeah, we have. And are you finding to... it easy, hard? Well, I tried. I said, you know, if possible, can we all do it at the same time? Do you know what it's like recording yes. one half of a conversation? It's, mm. what do you mean? No. How dare you say that? So it's... <laughs> you want to hear the lines of the other guy, so... Can I just say that was excellent? Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> that's, uh, that's how I do it. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I've done a bit of it, and then they send it off, and the animators spend four and a half years animating it, and then it comes... Yeah. So it takes it forever. Because, Chris Rock, you were brutally frank <laughs> about the art of voicing animation uh, uh, at the Oscars this year. Yeah. I, I hate it when, I, when actors say how hard it was, how much work went into my character. <laughs> Uh, when you do animated stuff, no, here's what happens. You go in a booth, and somebody go, go, okay, what do I say? They go, time to go to the store. And then I go, time to go to the store! <laughs> <laughs> you want to say it again? Okay. Time to go to the store! <laughs> <laughs> well, well, what else do you want me to say? Uh, uh, say it's cold outside. It's cold outside! <laughs> and then they give me a million dollars. <laughs> And uh, Stephen Magan, you're also heading back on stage. You're starring in uh, Joe Pennell's birthday at the Royal Court in June. Yes. And are you nervous about going back on stage? Uh, well, no. It's been a couple of years. The last thing I did, I did uh, to play on Broadway for six months. Tony nominated, ladies and gentlemen. Totally nominated. Thank Didn't you. win. Didn't win. Didn't win. Didn't win. <laughs> <laughs> Got to save your applause for any win. wins. Didn't but, win. Because uh, yeah. <laughs> you've done Broadway, you did a play. Yeah, yeah, I've made people shit themselves. 